Now let's get to the topic at hand, which is the history of Christianity. Now, as a disclaimer, I cannot give you the history of Christianity from A to Z. It's impossible to do so in, in, in one sitting. It's impossible to do so in two sittings, in ten sittings, in twenty sittings. It's impossible. And it's also impossible to do because there's so many variances in there. There's too many variances to give you let's say history of Christianity from Jesus into modern times talking about two thousand years worth of history that is that is that is muddled thousands and thousands of times over so my goal and and even the information I do have is too much for one sitting it's probably about I would say fifty hours worth of good information and that's being uh, uh, conservative on the on the estimate so what I'm going to try to do in the next couple of hours, inshallah ta'ala, is give you enough tools and evidences that when you are confronted with Christianity, when you are confronted with the Nasrani, you are able to have a footing to deal with them on. You're able to have a way of guiding them to the truth of Islam. Because if I'm, if this is not the purpose, then I should just go home. Because this is the goal. This is the purpose, is to guide people to the deen of Islam. So my goal is how to give you the evidences and the tools to be able to bring Christians from where they are to where you want them to be. And there is a process to do this. Many people have tried, and there are lots of good evidences out there, but you kind of have to put them all together. Uh, because none of us have gotten it completely right. And... When I was telling the brother Ali on the way over here, a lot of the modern uh, um, du'at, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless all of them and forgive those who have passed, <clears throat> they have done great leaps and efforts to bring people towards Islam. But one thing a lot of them do miss is the psychology of the Christian. They don't understand really the psychology that goes behind a Christian's thought process and this is why a lot of times even though their arguments are very profound they sometimes miss the mark because they don't understand the, the psychological process they don't understand how to take their thinking and bring it and, and kind of lead it to where you want them to be because you can't push a Christian to Islam you can only pull and, and, and in order to pull you have to be able to lay the you know, lay the seed along so that they just follow it into where you want them to go, inshallah ta'ala. And this is not trickery. It's just understanding the psychology of how they think and how they act. And someone who has never been a Christian, someone who has never understood how Christians justify their beliefs and justify their practices with their books and how they think about how they give da'wah to, 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 to non-Christians, then you will miss the mark most of the time. And this is what I'm going to try to give you today is some of that understandings, God willing. And the, and the reason why I brought a lot of reference material with me is so that people can, you can also understand this is not coming from Yusha. This is not from, from anything that I have invented. Um, every single book you're looking at right here was written by a Christian scholar. And everything I'm going to tell you was written and taught by Christian scholars. Um, some of them being the one of my um, biggest influences is a man named Bart Ehrman. Uh, Bart E B A R T E H R M A N. And I'll write some of these things down for you. Uh, but I'm gonna maybe try to pass some of these books around before so you can get them. Uh, but Bart Ehrman is one of the leading professors of textual criticism in the world right now. Um, even though a lot of Christian scholars have problems with some of his conclusions, which I have a problem with some of his conclusions, but the evidences he gives for what he says are unshakable. 
and he was a student of Bruce Metzger. And Bruce Metzger is one of the leading uh, scholars of, of, of textual criticism and theological seminary studies at Princeton University. Um, and, and he is uh, one of the, I guess you can say, the giants, one of the Goliaths of, of Christian uh, seminary in, in, in the modern age. Also from people like Holtz and Whitman from Cambridge University uh, are where I get a lot of my studies. So I don't study Christianity from Muslims just for the simple fact that that's not weighty evidence. Even if what they say is correct, it's when you look at the Isnad, and those of you with the understanding Hadith studies know Isnad, your Isnad needs to be correct even when you're dealing with this issue. If your Isnad r traces back to a Muslim, it's not going to work. It will not work. I don't care how much you try to do it. So I tried to keep my Isnad of chain of narration of Christian understanding and textual criticism with the scholars of Christianity. Try to keep my, my, my chain good. And I may jumble around with some different topics because I'm trying to give you as much information as I can and if I try to flow it then you'll miss a lot of it. So I'm going to try to give you as much as I can but know that we're going to go over this in more detail on Saturday. And sa that's at Al Muntada. We're going to go over this more in detail on Saturday at Al Muntada. What time after Dhuhr? Ba'd Dhuhr. Okay, inshallah. On Saturday at Muntada and also Probably one of the toughest lectures I will ever give in my life. We will also do this at Cambridge University, the home of, of, of modern textual criticism. So, you know, I'm, I'm, I, have, I have a task on my hands going there. Uh, so we will do it there as well, uh, God willing, inshallah. Now, first I want to lay down the foundation of what we're looking at because we're going to deal with the New Testament. Uh, to deal with the Old Testament, I'll get to it, but... Uh, um, well, we'll start there. I'll just give you some examples in the New Testament of why I left Christianity and some of the problems that are in there. But the crux of what I'm going to deal with is the New Testament because the, the Christians don't use the Old Testament other than references that agree with the New Testament. Anything else, you're, you're wasting your, your, your time and your, your effort. We will try to deal with the New Testament as much as we can. I'm going to try to give you some background in the New Testament, some of the problems of the New Testament, and then to show you even even... Without all, even with all of those problems, you can still prove your point. That what is left, this is, this is the most overwhelming evidence that you can give to a Christian, that even though your book is, 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 is manifestly corrupted, and it can be proven that it is manifestly corrupted, even the corruption is, there is still, what is taught in there, still disagrees with everything that you believe, and it still agrees with everything that I believe. So this is the beauty that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us. That even though it's corrupt, there is still enough in there to 